Hey, 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 everybody. It's Jerrica, and Holy Spirit just told me, get on here and practice with some people having a God time. That's what I call here in the Holy Spirit is God time. So let's just do a spontaneous little session right now. Jesus, what do you want to say? We bind the voice of the enemy and we crucify our own fleshly voice. We only want to hear you, Holy Spirit. Okay, so say what I just said, just you bind the voice of the enemy, crucify your own fleshly voice, Jesus, I only want to hear your voice. And if you want, you can close your eyes, and God's going to play that movie in your head, that good old imagination that he created to be holy for him. Movies and TV, they don't own our imagination, right? The enemy does not own our imagination. Holy Spirit does. We have the mind of Christ. So right now, Holy Spirit, we ask you corporately, what would you like to say to us individually? So don't wait too long. Pick the first thing that comes either in your any words that you hear in your head or any pictures you see in your imagination. What are you seeing? You can type in the comments below what you're seeing or you can write it down. You can keep it to yourself. You can text it to a friend. There's a verse that talks about what we hear in secret shout on the rooftops. And some words you want to keep between you and the Lord, but some you just want to shout on the rooftops. And Ecclesiastes talks about when you go to, uh, I got to find it. When you go to the temple, um, go near to God to hear rather than speak. Let your words be few. And that verse is always like really stuck out to me inspiring me to approach God in a stance, in a, in a position where I just want to hear him and not just talk, 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 talk. I mean, he loves to hear our voices, of course. He loves it when we talk to him. But I felt like for me it was kind of out of balance for a while. And I was like, okay, I want to apply this verse to my life. I want to hear what he has to say. I'm going to let my words be few. And then you just are like, whoa, he has a lot to say, and he has exciting things to say, creative things to say. He has an answer for every question. Any question we want to ask the Holy Spirit, he's got an answer. Why don't we try that right now? Ask Holy Spirit a question, and I'm going to, too. I'm going to ask him a question in my head. All right, did you get your question? All right, everyone got their questions? Okay, you wanna write it down, or you don't have to? Okay, so Holy Spirit, will you please speak to us about this question? We wanna have a two-way conversation with the Holy Spirit right now. What's the first thing you've got? I'm going to write it down. Maybe you heard him say a few words. Maybe you saw something in your imagination. Write it down. You feel his presence? I feel his presence right now. He loves doing this with us. And you can call it whatever, you, whatever is unique to you, but I like to call it God time. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for bringing your presence to us right now. We love you. We love spending time listening to you. Your word says in Proverbs that it, your word is more valuable than gold, money, 
silver, his word is like silver refined in the fire seven times. His word is so valuable, so doesn't it make logical sense to spend time getting his word and reading his Bible? If that's more valuable than any money on earth, then it would make sense that we would invest our time to get his words, right? That's wisdom. So I want to tell you guys the question I asked. I said, Holy Spirit, will you tell me, will you give me a picture of the value and worth of all my listeners? And I'll tell you what I saw, and I don't get it. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, I don't get it, okay? So, <laughs> we'll talk it out. Okay, this is what you do if you don't get something. I understand it. Okay, so I saw, like, this really cool chair. Have you guys seen those? They hang from the ceiling, and they're kind of curved, and they're made out of, like, wicker. This one was dark brown like wicker type material, very sturdy. And then they have pillows that, pillows on, pillow material. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? And you can sit in it. I've never sat in one, but I've seen them online. You sit in it and they can kind of swing around. It's something you'd put on a porch. And then on this, I saw a candle. I mean, I've been doing God times for a long time, and I still feel silly sometimes. Like, what? Or I feel confounded. Like, what does this mean? Okay, so I set the candle on. So what does that have to say about my listener's value and worth? Those chairs are expensive, and they're unique. Oh, gosh, they're unique. And what a cool invention they are. Not everyone has those. All right, well, that was simple. I think I was making it too complicated. You're unique, and that makes you valuable. You're unique, and you are a light. The way you shine for Jesus is unique. That's the message out of that. See, these visions in our imagination, sometimes they're literal, okay? Like, the other day I was doing laundry, and I had a vision of, someone coming to our door and knocking and I was like what and then five minutes later someone came to our door and knocked so God was literally showing me someone was going to come to the door and knock so I needed to get ready I had no idea that this person was coming over sometimes it's literal but sometimes the things we see in our imagination are very symbolic and I just wanted to say that okay that's obvious you guys know that so Whatever question you ask the Holy Spirit, you can write it down, you can write his answer down, and then if you don't understand it, you can talk it out with a friend or wait on it and see if it makes sense. So I'm going to leave this little God time by reminding us that we are unique and special in the way that we shine for Jesus. So shine for Jesus today, big and bright. Don't be hiding that light. Okay, bye.